I'd like to show you how to make sleeping mats on the loom using what we're calling the uh, pot holder method. So the first thing you're going to do is start out by getting your bags ready to cut. Okay, you're just going to take your grocery bags uh, that you're recycling. You're going to lay those out, smooth them out, and stack them up. Okay, you're going to take the bags. You can do as many as your scissors will cut through. Okay, so don't worry about that. You're going to fold the bag in half. You're going to go about three fingers up from the bottom. What you're trying to do is just get all this bit off that's kind of melted together. And then you're going to do the same thing at the top where the handle meets the bag. You're going to go about three fingers down. Nothing specific. You're going to cut your bags. With your scraps, they'll go in the recycle bin. And you can take those to your local recycling area and they can use those to make composite decking, park benches, that sort of thing. Okay, for the first set, you're going to leave these as is. You're just gonna do this once, okay? And this is gonna be your wide farm or your wide tubes. This is gonna be for the base. We're gonna do these again. Okay, we're gonna cut the bottom off. We're gonna cut the top off. And for the actual weaving of the bags, we're going to cut this section in two again. Okay, and this is going to be for the narrow twos that you're going to actually use to weave the mat. Okay, you're going to set these aside. You'll get about, you're going to need about 120 bags to do the base in the wide flarn, and you'll need roughly 600 or more to do the weaving. Put one on one arm, one on the other. You're going to do this with the wide and the narrow. You're going to grab the bottom, cross over, grab the bottom. You're going to pull these together. This makes your tubes. So you'll have a box of narrow tubes and you'll have a box of wide tubes. And that's how you begin. Okay, now we're going to start setting up the loom. Um, we're going to set up the base using the wide plarn. So you're going to take your wide twos that you've collected in a box. You're going to take two of these sections and put them together. What we found is that it takes about four bags to go from peg to peg on the loom. So we're going to take the bag, just put the end of one bag through the end of the other, and feed the rest of it through. Okay? Pull it tight. Okay, so now you have four. We're going to start at this end. And what we do with this is you're going to pretend that this eye bolt and the eye bolt down there and the one on that end are just another peg. Okay, they're the same as a peg. And this rod that runs through them is here only to help keep the mat straight. So you're just going to pretend this is another piece of plarn, okay, another piece of plastic. You're going to treat it just like you would uh, any of the others. So you're going to take your four. You're going to loop it over the bottom of your rod, over this eye bolt. You're going to run it all the way down and then loop it over the eye bolt on this end. Now when you're starting on each end where the rod is, you're going to want to put two of these, okay, just to make the edges a little stronger. So you're going to do another one. Run it all the way down, loop it over. And what you can do, just to keep it clean looking, you can take these two pieces and kind of give them a little twist, okay? This just makes it nice and neat and you can see where each row is. So you'll feed that over this eye bolt and that's your first section. Then you're gonna continue on and you're just gonna go from peg to peg, back and forth until you have every peg covered with these four wide pieces of plarn. Okay, if you have a piece that's not quite long enough, I'll show you here. You've looped your four together. You go from this end down, and it's not quite long enough. So all you're gonna do is take another piece of plarn, stick the end through, okay? Pull the rest through just like you did before. 
and you're gonna fit this on this peg. You don't wanna tie a knot right here at this end because in the end, when you're trying to take the rug off of the loom, the knot's gonna get in the way. So you're gonna pull this to the side, okay? You're going to cut your plastic, and you're simply just gonna make it fit, okay? You're just gonna tie a knot, and make this piece of yarn fit. Then you're gonna tear up, cut off the edges, and it's good to go. Now as you're going from end to end, just like you did on the first two, you can give them a little twist if you want, just to make it uh, a little cleaner, so that when you're going from piece to piece, you can see what you're doing. So you're gonna do this all the way across. You're gonna have two on the very farthest edge, just like you did to start here so that the sides will be strong. And that's it. Okay, now you're ready to start your weaving once you have the base set up. So you're just gonna take one of your narrow twos. Now these are the ones that you cut in half, the bags that you cut in half. So you're gonna take your narrow two, you're gonna feed the end of it under this first peg, which is the eye bolt, and the bar, okay, the rod. So you're gonna feed it under the entire thing, the bags that are over top of it and the bar itself. You're gonna pop out a loop on the end and feed it through, just like you've been when you put the bags together. And that's how you begin. Then you hold the end like it's a needle, a needle and thread, and you're gonna go over, under. And you're gonna do this with each peg, okay? Whatever's on each peg, you're gonna go over that peg, under this peg, over, under, all the way across. And you can have four people doing this, um, two on this side, one at each end, and two on the other side. So as you get about halfway, you're gonna pass it off to the other person. Okay. And you're gonna wanna pack this down about Oh, just give yourself a little gap, about an inch from the pegs, so that in the end, when you're um, doing a change stitch across the top, you'll have a little bit of room, okay? You're going to feed the end of this bag through the one that you've been using and just add on to it. You're just gonna keep doing this every time your strand gets a little bit short, okay? And you'll just keep weaving over and under when you get to the bar on that side, you'll just go over or under the entire bar, plastic bags and all, okay? And then you'll just start working your way back. Whatever you did the first time, if you went over on this peg, you'll go under it the next time. So you'll just do the opposite of what you did on the way back. Okay. So I went under this peg here, so this time I'm going over it, and then under and over and under and over, all the way back across. And you're just going with whatever's on each peg. Each peg is a strand, okay? And as you're doing it, you're wanting to use your fingers to pack it down to the strand that was before it. You wanna make sure this is tight you're gonna do this all the way across. You're gonna keep packing it down, that's very important. Uh, we don't want a mat in the end that you can stick your fingers through. Uh, we're trying to keep this water tight. So you need to pack these as tight as you can down this way toward the pegs all the way. You can start on this end, you can start on the other end exactly the same. There's no difference from end to end. Whatever's on a peg is your strand and you're gonna go over or under your strands as you go. Again, you're gonna take another two when it gets too short. You're gonna feed it through. You're gonna put the rest of it through and tighten it down, just a little slip knot. And you'll just continue on. You'll just continue weaving. And you'll have another team of people that are weaving from the other end. They're coming towards you. We're going this way and eventually we will meet in the middle. And that's it.
Okay, once you've been weaving on the mat, coming from both ends, you're gonna end up meeting in the middle, okay? This is coming from one end, this is coming from the other. What you do once you meet in the middle and you make sure everything is packed really tight so that you can't uh, put your fingers through it, you're just gonna tie these two ends together. Okay. Try to get it sort of hide under a weave. You're gonna tie a knot. Snip this off. And then you're just going to tuck this in, okay? And you have a beautiful mat. Once you've completed your mat, you're going to pull these metal rods on the sides out. This is going to release the sides. I've already pulled out one, so you have to slide this out. Sometimes it's a little tight and you may need to grab the rod with pliers and have a couple people hold the loom. Once you pull that out, the sides are now released. So you're going to do a little chain stitch across the top. You're gonna to take the first loops off of the eye bolt, take the second loop off and feed it through the first. Okay, then you'll take the next one, feed it through that one. Feed it through that one. Okay, you're just going to do this all the way across. And you're making a little chain stitch across the top of the mat. So you just keep going all the way to the end. And this is also why you needed to use needed to leave just a little bit of space here so that you have some room to work. And when you're setting this up, you didn't want to tie knots on the end of this because they kind of get in the way. It doesn't have to be perfect. Come to your final piece. You've got a chain stitch all the way across the top. Okay. Then you're going to take this piece. You're going to go down here to the side somewhere. Find this edge. And you're just going to take another piece of yarn, feed it through the loop and the mat. Just going to tie it off. Make a knot. Snip it, clean up any little edges that you have. You're going to tuck this knot underneath, straighten it up, and you're good to go. Once your mat is complete, Okay, you can fluff it, hide some of the knots, and you're going to have a nice sturdy mat that you won't be able to stick your fingers through. Okay, one thing that we do here at Midwest Mission, when we ship these, the mats are folded in half long ways and then rolled up. So we make a little braided piece of plarn about six feet long. We just take three pieces, braid them together in a strand, knot them on the ends, and this is what we use to tie up our mat once it's rolled up for shipping.